Good morning, guys. What's going on? Today is Friday. That means Zuri's back in the tower, and I slept very late because I was up all night playing with my Switch. <laughs> Went to the midnight release last night, uh, picked up a Switch, then uh, booted up some Zelda and was playing a little bit of Zelda when I got home. So I was up late last night, just woke up. It's very late this morning. Zer's right here. We're going to see what his inventory is. Uh, I will be streaming some Zelda this afternoon. Uh, but before that, there is going to be an announcement from Bungie at noon Eastern time or 9 a.m. Pacific time going over basically like a roadmap of what's to come in March. So whether that's going to be uh, the spring update landed in March or if it lands in early April, we don't know, but they're giving us a roadmap. They'll probably announce some live streams, stuff like that. Uh, so it should be a pretty exciting day for Bungie News, uh, and that's going to all go down at noon. I'm sure I'll put a video up shortly thereafter. So, with all that being said, let's check out Zer's inventory. I just switched weapons instead of opening them up. I've been playing too many different video games. All the buttons are messed up. All right, for Titans, we got an insurmountable skull fort. I've always liked the look of this thing. I think it's a really cool look. Um, the main perk here is improved transfusion. Kills with storm fists immediately trigger health regeneration. Respawn with full melee energy. Gain a second melee charge. On any other on any other class, I think this would be great. Uh, but because Titans have that little T Rex punch thing, I'm I'm doing it in my office right now. But you can't see it. But it's hilarious. I can tell you that much. <laughs> It, it just never comes into play, and there's, you know, once again, we know what the best exotics are, and on a Titan, this isn't one of them. So, you know, it's cool looking if you want to play around with Storm Fist, or if you're doing a quest that requires you to get a lot of ability kills, this can be a pretty good way to go. Uh, but for the most part, I don't find that the Storm Fist is all that great. I do like immediately getting my health back. That's awesome. Uh, but compared to the Armamentarium or to the Twilight Garrison, I just don't find myself using stuff like this. Uh, the roll on this one is increased intellect, increased strength, hands-on, second thoughts, and invigoration. Next up for the Hunter, we got the ATS-8 Tarantella. This is a cool-looking piece. I've always liked the look of this. I wish you could combine exotics because it would look really good with the matching helmet. Uh, the main perk here is take reduced arc damage from Minions of the Darkness, Arc Grenades and Arc Blade recharge faster. Not a bad way to go if you're doing an Arc Burn Nightfall, but, <laughs> you know, there's better exotics. This one is really, I, I've always kind of figured that this one is kind of second tier, third tier as far as exotics go. I've never never really played around with this one too much, to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not a big uh, Blade Dancer. And uh, with the further nerfs to play Dancer, that subclass just feels like it keeps getting worse and worse. And just getting Arc Grenades and Arc Blade to recharge faster uh, doesn't seem super exotic. And taking reduced Arc Damage from Minion of the Darkness, uh, unless you're playing a really tough Nightfall, which are pretty rare these days, this isn't a top-tier exotic by any means. Uh, this one comes with increased intellect, increased discipline, auto rifle ammo, sidearm ammo, Arc Burn defense, and Arc Armor. Next up for the Warlocks, we got the Void Fang Vestments. The main perk here is Hungering Void. Spawn with full grenade energy, and your Axion Bolt grenade spawns an additional Seeker. This, in PvP, can be fucking annoying. <laughs> like, it's not bad. If you're going to run Axion Bolt grenades on your Void Walker, this thing can be pretty good, especially in sixes, I find. Uh, because, you know, your, your, your Axion Bolts just, they're better and they're more useful. Uh, they're still not going to kill many people, but they, they what they do is they break up engagements and allow you to, you know, create an engagement in your favor. Either you know a bunch of guys are following you, so you you drop down uh, an axiom bolt, and that makes them pause and you know deal with those axiom bolts, or you you pre-fire one into a into a room that you know there's an enemy in, and he's dealing with not only you when you come in, but also your axiom bolt. Bolt. Axion bolts and tracking grenades in general are very powerful, and this is pretty damn good. Uh, this one comes with increased intellect, increased discipline, scout rifle ammo, fusion rifle ammo, solar burn defense, void armor. 
The weapon of the week is one of my favorites, the Fourth Horseman. I love this weapon. Uh, it's very unique looking. It's very fun to use. It sounds cool as hell. Uh, again, on an Arkburn Nightfall, this thing could be absolutely a blast to play with. Uh, definitely not a top tier exotic, especially in PvP. But in PvE, now that every shotgun got a little bit of a damage boost because they no longer do crits, uh, this thing can be a lot of fun. So I highly recommend picking this one up if you don't have it, if you're still playing PvE. I know that a lot of you guys have basically dropped PvE altogether or just playing PvP. This isn't this isn't the gun for PvP. I mean, it can be fun in PvP, but it's not a top tier weapon by any means, especially now that you hardly have any ammo. Because this thing fires rapid fire, full, fires full auto, and it does so really rapidly to the point where it can almost be difficult to only fire one shot. And the range and impact are low enough that to kill somebody, you're going to need two or three shots to get the job done in PvP. So you're not going to want to use this in PvP. It's just not viable right now. But in PvE. I've always loved this thing. I think it's a lot of fun. It looks cool. It's a very unique weapon. I love the four barrels on it. it sounds awesome. The perks on this are CQB Ballistics, Accurized Ballistics, Field Choke, Final Round, Fitted Stock, Hand Loaded, Speed Reload, and Return to Sender. So it's a just for fun gun. It's a just for fun exotic. Uh, it can be useful for burning down things very fast. Back in the days of uh, Challenge of the Elders and the Skullless days. I used to use this thing because it was good and it was it was hardcore, but shotguns have been nerfed since then in PvE, um, and there's not a whole lot of encounters that I find that this thing really excels in anymore, especially taking up an exotic. So it's a just-for-fun gun in PvE, probably not going to be a ton of fun in PvP unless you really get good with it, but it is, it is a cool gun, and I, I've always loved it. The... Um, Legacy Engram this week is a helmet. So this is a year one helmet that costs 29 strange coins. There's basically no reason to get this at this point. I would just pass by it altogether. Uh, Curios, we get the Plasma Drive, the Void Drive to upgrade your blue rare sparrow to legendary status to change the color of its contrail. We got Heavy Ammo Synthesis. We can buy three for one strange coin or ten for three strange coins. We got three of coins. You can buy for seven strange coins. Glass Needles for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, what else we got? Motes of Light and Exotic Shards. So I've got to stock back up on Glass Needles and Exotic Shards this week because I've been really focusing on the quality of my exotics, re-rolling those exotics, getting the exotics that uh, maybe I deleted over time and uh, making sure my exotic armor is super good. Uh, and I've been really enjoying that. So that's it for Xur. Um, nothing too exciting there, really. But, you know, that's what we come to expect from Xur. After... <clears throat> Two years of essentially the same inventory, you know, there's not a whole lot that he can bring to the table that's really going to get your heart pacing uh, like it used to back in the day. Hopefully with Destiny 2. I wonder if they'll do a Zer type of uh, thing with Destiny 2. I'd be disappointed if Zer didn't make an appearance at all in Destiny 2, but I wouldn't be shocked if they changed it up uh, in big ways. Maybe they had him out on patrol. Like, imagine this. You're out on patrol. It's my honor to serve. And you got to find Xur, like, out in the wilderness. He doesn't come to the tower because the tower's been destroyed by the T Cabal. So you got to find him out in the wilderness. How cool would that be? And what if he moved, like, once an hour? So, like, if I made a video in the morning telling you where he was, he could be different by the time you go find him on Saturday afternoon. That'd be neat. <laughs> Might be infuriating, too, actually, come to think of it. But I don't know. There's a lot of cool things they could do with Xur in the future. I think he's a cool thing. Uh, but he's just been exactly the same for so long that he's lost kind of his excitement. The hype, the Zer hype has uh, been somewhat diminished over time. And that's too bad for Zer because Zer is okay in my book. Old squid face there. So that's going to do it, guys. Look forward to another video later this afternoon uh, going over the changes that Bungie is making, the announcements Bungie is making today. Um, and I'll be streaming some Zelda, actually, on the Switch later this afternoon. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm I played about the first half hour, hour of it, and uh, I'll be starting from scratch <clears throat> for the stream. But I am really looking forward to playing it because from what I've played and from what I've seen in reviews, the game is stupendous. And then I will be also uh, continuing my playthrough on Twitch of Horizon Zero Dawn uh, along with Zelda. I'll kind of be dueling those games, playing both of those games. 
And uh, that's a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying Horizon. So that's going to do it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.